Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Um, I never ever thought I'd be recording a session in my kitchen, a story time or any sort of session in my kitchen, but we are. And today we are going to be making the Great Australian Biscuit, which is the Anzac Biscuit. Hence my fabulous poppy scarf, which I got a couple of years ago in New Zealand. And I was in New Zealand, in Auckland, on Anzac Day, which was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Cannot believe that I did it, but I'm so glad I did. Um, so I got up really early in the morning, walked all the way up the street, and joined thousands of people who waited for the dawn and commemorated the end of World War One. And the Anzac Biscuit is a really important biscuit for the Australians and New Zealanders. It was a biscuit that was made by the mums, the dads probably as well, and the sisters and families of servicemen who were fighting, and these biscuits were able to be packed away and sent to the soldiers so they had biscuits. These biscuits will last quite a while. They are delicious biscuits, and that is what we're going to make today. First thing I need to do though is our acknowledgement of country. So let me put my glasses on. So we are together on the land of the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung and we acknowledge ancestors who have taken care of country, land, waterways and sky. We acknowledge the elders, past, present and emerging, all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children and children of all cultures. We are one with this land. Thank you for that. Awesome. Now, baking. Baking 101. All right, so this is for your grown-ups. And this is also for the kids. This is, you can tell your teachers that you have done some science work when you bake your Anzac biscuits. Now, when you bake, first thing you need to do is have a recipe. Not really well, you know, not really well printed, my printer's running out of ink, but nevertheless, I can see the important bits. You need your recipe. All right, when you have that, you need your ingredients and make sure you've got everything you need ready to go. So I have on my bench, I have my rolled oats, I have my brown sugar, I have my coconut, I have my bicarb soda, bicarbonate soda, bicarb soda, I have my plain flour, my butter, everything tastes better with butter. You can't make this with margarine. Telling you now, you need to have real butter. Okay, and last but not least, I have the golden syrup. Again, golden syrup is a necessity for Anzac biscuits, okay? So, next thing you need to do, the oven. You always need to turn on your oven. It needs time to heat to the temperature that your biscuits or whatever you're baking requires. It's no use putting your things in a cold oven. It just won't work. It needs to be temperature. So I'm just going to wander over here, turn on my oven. I need to turn on the fan oven and turn it around. My recipe says 160 degrees. So that is what my oven is set for. Don't know what that is in Fahrenheit because we're Australian. We use Celsius. All right, we're metric here. Okay, now I also have with my with my stuff that I've got. Scales, because you'll need your scales to measure your butter, because I'm not using the whole thing. I'm only using 125 grams. And this is 250. No, no, this one's 500. Blech. This one's 500. So I don't need all of it. I only need a quarter. All right, do your sums. That's it. I will also need my cup measure, my one third cup measure. And my measuring spoons because I will be needing a tablespoon for the golden syrup and I'll be needing a half tablespoon for the bicarb soda. All right, are we ready to get started? Oh, you know what else I need? I need my bowl. Can't do it without a bowl. Okay, and our baking trays. Now you need three because these biscuits spread, which means once you put them on, they as they cook, they get hot and they spread out. You put them too close, they're gonna get stuck to just be one big clump. And that's not what you want, you want biscuits. So, 
Important thing, baking paper. We're going to line the trays with the baking paper, one. Preparation is the key for your baking or you'll be running around like a, head, a chook with its head cut off and you just won't know if you're Arthur or Martha. Okay, that's done. Fabulous. Shall we get started? Okay, ready now. I've got my apron on. Excuse the apron, but it is the only one I own. Okay, and I do have my blonde moments. So, baking 101. Let's get started. Now, the recipe calls for one cup of rolled oats. So let's get it. And we have to put this in a bowl. We'll be combining these together. One cup rolled oats. One cup plain flour. There's plain flour and self-raising flour. Self-raising flour, of course, um, makes things rise because they're but plain flour, which is sometimes called all-purpose flour. Excuse me while I get a knife to help measure off the top of that. Um, plain flour is your all-purpose flour, which is used for Anzac biscuits and lots of other wonderful things. All right, so plain flour, done. Two thirds a cup of coconut. My mother's going to be looking at this going, can't stand coconut, but actually mother, trust me on this, you barely taste it in these. So I have my one third cup measuring cup and we'll put one, two, two thirds of a cup of coconut. Next ingredient, brown sugar. There are so many types of sugar. There is white sugar, caster sugar, icing sugar, brown sugar, raw sugar, dark brown sugar. Oh my God, there's coffee sugar. It's so many, it's just scary. This recipe says brown sugar. So we need two thirds a cup of brown sugar. Now brown sugar is a little bit tricky. It's got lots of, it's harder, stickier. So I'll get it. One. Squeeze that in, maybe get a bit more. Two. Okay, two thirds a cup of that. That is ready to go. All right, these three guys will mix together, but we also need 125 grams of butter. Now, sharp knife, cutting board. Kids, get your grown-ups to do this if you're too little. Grown-ups, be careful with your knife, please. All right, so I've got one 500 grams. So half of 500 grams, 250. And half of 250 is 125. And let's see how close I got. I'm going to turn on my set of scales. These are um, digital scales. They're really, really, really good. Oh, 122. I need three more grams. So I'll just slide off a tiny bit more. Yep, spot on, 125 grams. That'll go back in the fridge in a minute. Now this goes in a saucepan which I didn't show you before, the saucepan, because this is going to go on the stove because we need to melt this with two tablespoons of water and I'm going to put in three tablespoons of golden syrup. All right. One. Two. And let's do the golden syrup. Now this is the fun bit. Golden syrup. Oh, I love golden syrup. It's so sugary and sweet and thick and runny and oh my god, it's fabulous. Especially on crumpets. And they are great in biscuits. It's great on pancakes. I love it on hot cross buns. So that's one. Now I'll use my spoon again because it's really sticky. 
and it sticks to the spoon and we want to get as much in the pot as we can. Give it a good shake, come on. It's so thick it takes forever. Two. And you might see in the corner of the footage a dog that walks into the kitchen on a semi-regular basis. That's my dog, Armand, and she uh, likes to be part of the action, but not too close. She just likes to come in and check what's going on. All right, that's two. Now, because I made this recipe, I did a test run the other day, and as delicious as they were, they didn't spread as much as I was hoping to and it only had two tablespoons of golden syrup in the recipe. So today, I'm gonna to try three, just to make them spread that little bit more. Okay, now, we're going to have a little bit of magic happen. I am going to go over to the stove. We're going to come back magically and this will be all done. Okay, now before, this is going on, on the stove, which means there is heat. If your kid's doing this at home, make sure your grown-ups help you with the stove. Um, we put this on a heat and the butter will melt. We don't want the butter to burn, so we just get it all till it just melts. And just when it's melted, we put in our bicarb soda. Remember, half a teaspoon. And when we put that in, it's going to fizz. Just a, just a little bit, but it's going to fizz, and then that's going to go into our dry mixture. All right, so back in a moment with the magic of editing. All right, everyone, my butter is melted. I don't know if you can quite see it, but I have beautiful runny butter. I have mixed together our dry ingredients so that they're ready to go. Now ready for the bubbles of half a teaspoon of bicarb soda. Ready? Let's see if this does the bubble. Whoa, it's frothing just as it needs to do. Beautiful. So don't be afraid when it does that because that's what it's supposed to do. Now, these melted ingredients go straight into the bowl. Okay. All right, with your wooden spoon, I always like using a wooden spoon, you mix it all in. So you don't want to be mixing this with your hand because you've got hot ingredients. So you use your spoon, get it all mixed in till all the dry ingredients are all wet. And everything is gorgeous. Perfect. Look at that. Wow, I'm ready. Now, what we're going to do is get a teaspoon out of my drawer. One teaspoon, scrape off the spoon, because this is how we're going to measure our balls, which we're going to make of mixture to make the biscuits. So, get a heaped teaspoon, roll it in your hands. By the way, my hands are very clean. I've been washing them. Put it on. Press down slightly. Oh, these are going to be perfect. Oh my goodness, these are going to be amazing. All right. Probably get nine on a tray. Three. Press it down slightly. Oh my goodness, I just got a feeling these are going to be great. Probably a bit too much mixture there. All right, you'll get a feel for it. You'll get to know, okay, we've edited, we're back. We now have three trays of Anzac, well, we have three trays of biscuit dough, which are rolled up into balls, nine on each, on two of the trays, and five on the other. Okay, what is two times nine? Quick, no, faster. Two times nine, or nine twos, 18, that's right. 9 and 9 is 18, and we have another 5. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 biscuits. Not bad, actually. Not bad. Now, these are now ready to go in the oven. Now, what I did need to mention, when you're doing your rolling up because you're using your hands and everything, if you need to blow your nose, wipe your face, or whatever, 
do make sure you go wash your hands again before you go getting back into the mix. All right, so I am now going to put two of these trays in the oven because there's only room in there for two. And they go in the oven. Let me check my recipe for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to put them on for 10. All right, so let me just go over to my oven. Now, I don't need my oven mitts yet because these aren't hot. These are still cold. All right. One tray in my preheated oven at 160 degrees. Two trays. All right, important thing. We need to know how long it's gonna take. It says 10 to 12 minutes. I need my timer. Make my oven turn its timer on. It is now on for 10 minutes. Let's have some more magic and see how they look. Alarm has gone off. The timer's ready. It's telling me to get the biscuits out. You need to have your glove, your oven mitt, or uh, something really thick because you will burn yourself. Are you ready? This is exciting. Oh my goodness, these are perfect. One tray. Two trays. Now, these need to stay on the tray for five minutes to cool down before you take them off because they are soft. Excuse me while I put the last tray in. And quickly shut the door to keep the heat in. These biscuits have come out and they're soft. If you try to take them off the tray now, they will fall apart, they'll break. They need time to cool down and get hard. All right, let's just wait for that last tray to come out and then we can have a look and maybe even have a taste. All right, let's just wait and see. Oh my God, last batch is done. These are perfect. This batch, what I did is I pushed down the dough balls a little bit further, really squashed them out a bit, and look how they've come out. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to taste them. So these were definitely 10 minutes in the oven. 10 minutes if you like them a little bit chewy, about 12 minutes if you like your Anzac biscuits a bit crunchier. Now, just to let you know, the recipe will be on the Facebook page. Um, the recipe I was using, because I did Google search it, there are lots of variations of the Anzac recipe, and as you know, I actually modified it just slightly myself. But this recipe I got off a website called Lucy Bake Play Smile, and her recipe has actually been authorized and given permission by uh, the RSL, so we can use, she is able to use it. So I think it must be the closest one to what people were doing back in. 1915, you know, when, when World War I was actually happening. So I'm going to turn the kettle on and make myself a cup of tea because these ones are all beautifully cool now. These ones, as I said, will need to stay on the tray for a couple of minutes just to cool down so that they get they firm up because right now they are soft and they'll break everywhere. So we'll leave them to cool down on the cooling rack. Thank you for joining me today. I did forget to introduce myself. I am Suzanne and this is a video for the Mooney Valley Library Service. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you all get to make some Anzac biscuits. Hope the kids get to help you if you've got kids at home. Um, they can use it as a science, home echo, um, maths. It's oh, so many things. We've got maths. English because they need to read the recipe, maths for the measuring, science for the measuring, and the thing with the bicarb soda where it all fizzes and everything. Maybe do a bit of a Google search on why bicarbonate soda makes things fizz. Because I think they use it when you make volcanoes. Check that out as well, another science possibility. Anyway, enjoy your biscuits. Have a wonderful Anzac Day if you're making them for Anzac Day. And I'll catch us all soon in the library. Bye.